Okay, so we want to um, state this initial properties of the ito integral for uh, simple processes. Nevertheless, I can already tell you that these properties will also hold for the general ito integral for every function in the M2 class. Uh, because we will see that after we find the ito integral for simple processes, we will show that every function in the M2 class is something that we can approximate via a sequence of simple processes and the uh, integral of the general function is approximated by this sequence of ito integral for simple processes and because of different theorems like the dominated convergence and so on, we inherit the properties of the um, ito integral for simple processes. Okay, so let's start with our first proposition. Any question? Okay. So, proposition. Let phi one, phi one and phi two be two simple processes in M two zero capital. Okay, so we consider two different simple processes, phi1 and phi2. So these are two simple processes in our M2 class. Then the first property that we want to show is that as we have for the standard integral that we all know, if I take the integral of the sum, it is equal to the sum of the integral. Now this is a very useful property that does not hold in general for all the integrals we you can think of. For example, in convex analysis, uh, there are different integrals for which is not guaranteed that even this simple summation property is satisfied. But for us it is. So if I take the integral zero t of phi one t omega plus phi 2 t omega d b t omega this is equal to the sum of the integral so 0 t phi 1 t omega d b t omega plus the integral between 0 and capital T of phi 2 t omega d b t omega okay now to speed up a little bit the writing and to ease notation from now on unless there is ambiguity i will remove the t omega part okay but it's always there so if you want to be over precise you can keep on writing that. The second property is the following. Let C be a constant if I take the integral 0 t of C phi, uh, let's choose one of the two, so phi 1, okay, phi 1 t b and again, phi 1 t omega d b t omega, but as I was telling you before, and not doing, I'm shrinking a little bit the notation. This is equal to c times the integral between 0 and t of phi 1 db. These two properties are very useful because they simplify a lot the treatment of these kind of things. But I leave the proof to you. What you have to do is just to substitute the definition that we gave before, that now I have cancelled. Uh, but still, you can figure out how to prove these two results. By the way, one thing that I have not yet observed, but I'm pretty sure you already observed, is that look at this integral, the eta integral 
and this also links to the third property that we will give in a minute. This eta integral is what? The eta integral is a random quantity itself. It is a random quantity because of the function for sure phi or f in the general sense if that function is actually a random quantity. But it is in any case a random quantity because of the db part. So this is the increment, the infinitesimal increment of a Brownian motion. And what do we know about that infinitesimal into the, uh, increment? It is a random quantity which is normally distributed with mean zero and variance. No courageous one? And variance equal to the length of the time interval. So if we consider dB, we are essentially considering the time interval dt. So in that case, it would be the dt, the variance. It's very important to recall this. And in fact, we have the third property. That is to say, if I take the expectation of my eta integral, and here let me be a little bit precise. So I write the phi one, but it can be phi two is the same. Omega d v t omega. Then this expectation of this normal quantity is always zero. So we will prove that is zero. So after proving, then you can always use that. But please recall that this is always the case, and it will also be the case for a generic f via the fact that we know that the inter integral of f is approximated by the sequence of inter integrals of simple processes that have expectation zero. So obviously, in the limit, also the expectation of the, let's call it the full integral with f needs to be zero. And this is very important because if you are asked to compute the expectation of an integral, integral, if the integral integral is well defined, that is to say your function belongs to the M2 class or the H2 class later, and blah, 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 the expectation is zero. So there is no need of losing time or wasting time in computations. It's this zero. And that helps a lot during the exam. Okay? So always recall this property. Now, this property can be proven quite easily. All we need to know is to exploit our definition of the eta integral. So let's rewrite this. What we are saying is that the expectation of zero capital T of phi one dB is equal to zero. Now, what can we do? Let's just substitute the definition of our integral here. Now, phi one is a simple process. It means that I can represent it as the summation for j from zero to n minus one of what? Of a quantity a j omega and what? Since it's the eta integral of a uh, simple process, I just take the b t j plus one omega minus b t j. But let's again simplify. B t j plus one minus b t j. Okay, we drop the omega to shorten a little bit the equations. This is what? This is our definition of the integral. So we have just substituted the definition of the integral that we have given. Now, one first thing that I can observe is the following. I'm taking the expectation of a sum. Okay? And this is a finite sum. Okay, very good. But then it means that 
if I take the expectation of the sum, because of the fact that the expectation is a linear operator, the expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations. So it means that I can immediately take these in sum. And now I will add a j omega that multiplies b t j plus 1 minus b t j. Okay? Now, what happens now? I have the expectation of this product of two random quantities. What can I do? Can I immediately switch from the expectation of the product to the product of the expectations, which is actually what I want to do? Let's imagine for a moment that I can do that. But please, underline, let's imagine, is not true in general that the expectation of the product is the product of the expectation. It's only true if there is independence, if the two quantities are correlated, and so on. But not true in general. It's a serious error to take the expectation of the product to be the product of the expectations. What I'm saying to you is that for a moment, I play as if I could do that. So if I could do that, I could write this the summation up to n minus 1 of the expectation of a, j, omega, the expectation of the first term, and the expectation of b, t, j plus 1 minus b, t, j. But if this is true, so if this were true, I will be extremely happy because I have the summation of these products of expectations. I for a moment ignore this part and I just focus my attention on this. What is this? This is the expectation of the increment of a Brownian motion. But what do we know about the increments of a Brownian motion? It's a normally distributed random variable with expectation zero and variance equal to tj plus one minus tj. I already tell you, expectation. I already told you, expectation zero. So it means that this object here is zero. So it means that if I can split this expectation in these two objects, actually, I get my result. Because this is a zero, multiplies this, whatever it is, then I take the sum of zeros is zeros. The nice thing is that actually I can do that. So I can make this passage. I can split the expectation of aj omega and the increment of the Brownian motion. Why can I do that? Because my simple process is in the M2 class. So it satisfies the second point. It is not anticipating, it is adapted to Ft. So it means that at time tj, the quantity aj omega is measurable with respect to Ftj. And this interval with respect to Tj is in the future because it's between Tj and Tj plus 1. So I can actually, because of the fact that Aj is Ftj measurable, I can actually split the joint product into the product of the expectation. So I can split the expectation of the product into the product of the expectation. But only because I have the measurability second property of the M2 class for AJ with respect to FTJ. Okay? So that's very important. And now you see why we start imposing those assumptions. They allow those properties. They allow us to solve these type of processes. So we solve the problem and we actually prove that every integral for a simple process has expectation equal to zero. Okay, so let's consider the last property, and then I promise I will shut up, because this is the last topic that we cover in this class. Next class, we will then pass to the general definition of the integral for a generic f in M2, and we will consider the Eto-Dublin formula, 
which is the tool that for us is fundamental in order to find solutions to stochastic integrals and stochastic differential equations. So, um, and that, for example, would be the tool that we will use when playing with uh, geometric one motion, which is the photo type of stochastic process, the simplest one that you can use to model the prices of an asset. Okay, you also have the arithmetic one motion, but most of the time we play with the geometric one motion. And thanks to the Ito formula, we will know the, the answer of the, the solution of the, of the process. Okay, so the last property, the fourth one, is what goes under the name of Ito isometry. And it's the probably most famous property of the Ito integral. It's a wonderful result that transforms the Ito integral into the into a riemann stieltjes integral. So it's some sort of magic that you will see in a minute. The result is the following. If I consider the expectation of the product of two Ito integrals, for the processes phi 1, phi 2 that are simple processes. So phi 1 dB times 0 T phi 2 dB, okay? This is equal to the expectation of the integral between 0 and capital T of phi 1 phi 2, the product of the two, and Abracadabra dt. So the db term somehow becomes a dt term. So there is this fantastic change between the Eto integral into a Riemann Stieltjes integral. How can it be? Okay, let's try to prove it. We start from the simplest situation. The representation I'm going that I'm given here is a little bit more general than the standard formulation that you find in many books. And you also then find these as a second step. But I give this because in my view in synthetic form it's more important because it's the trick that you use when you want to study the covariance, the correlation among mm, Ito integrals. Uh, between couples of Ito integrals, and it's definitely, definitely important. Then you know that the variance is a special type of covariance, it's the covariance of a random variable with itself. So automatically, the common Ito isometry is recovered. So let's start from the simplest case, that is to say, the one of the variance in which we assume that phi1 is equal to phi2 and is equal to some phi, okay? Some generic phi. So what we want to prove is that the expected value of the product of these two integrals, but now phi1 is equal to phi2 and they are equal to phi, so the expected value of the 0 t phi db integral squared Okay, because of the fact that they are the same integral now, is equal to the expectation of these phi squared db. Because again, phi 1 is equal to phi 2. Uh, dt, sorry, 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 sorry. dt. Okay? Very good. How can we, how can we prove, how can we prove that? in the usual way. So, my suggestion is to substitute the definition of inter integral. If we do that, we have that the expectation of 0 capital T phi db squared is equal to the expectation of what? Of the sum for j from 0 to n minus 1 of a j omega the increment of the Brownian motion b t j plus one minus b t j, and we close it. 
Then we close the parentheses, squared, and it's it. Now, the argument here can be expanded and it becomes the expectation of I open a large bracket. What? The expectation of the sum for j equal to 0 and minus 1 of a j squared omega multiply what? b t j plus 1 minus b t j squared. But this is not enough because we have to add 2 times what? 2 times the sum for 0 smaller than equal to j smaller than k smaller than equal to n minus 1 of what? a j omega multiply b t j plus 1 minus b t j times a k omega times b t k plus 1 minus b t k closed. And now we can also close the large bracket of our expectation. So we have two terms. We have a term here that we can call A and a term here that we can call B. So if we are interested in computing the in computing our expectation as simply to observe that this expectation because of the linearity of the operator is equal to the expectation of A plus the expectation of B. Okay, let's start from the expectation of B. Let's see what we can do. If we want to compute the expectation of B, it is, and allow me not to rewrite everything from scratch, if I found it, the expectation of B, it's like writing here the expectation of this term here. Okay? You agree with me. But since the expectation is a linear operator, what I can do, I can also rewrite this in this way by taking the expectation here inside the sum. So now I have two times the sum of the expectation of this product of one of variable, a j omega, the increment in t j plus one t j, a k omega, remember that k is larger than j, b t k plus one, b t k. So these are four random variables. But now one thing that I can immediately notice is that once again, I can transform these expectation of a product over four random quantities into the product of expectations. And in particular, if I want, I can split this expectation into different expectations. I can take, for example, the expectation of this part here up to AK so this is the expectation of a j omega b t j plus 1 minus b t j multiplying a k omega closed parenthesis times the expectation of this term here which is b T k plus 1 minus b t k. Okay? So this is what I can do. And why can I do that? 
because of the same reasons of measurability we had before. So what we have, we have that since k is in is larger than j, for sure we have that this increment of the Brownian motion is independent from that increment of the Brownian motion. We have the measurability of the two random quantities a j a k, so I can actually factor in this way. But as before, the expectation of these increment of the Brownian motion is equal to zero. So at the end of the day, the entire B term disappears. The expectation of A plus the expectation of B is nothing more than the expectation of A. So I will delete this part and continue focusing on the expectation of A. The only thing that I have to do is now to close the parentheses here. Okay, what can I do now? As before, I can take my expectation within, I can take my expectation within j equal to 0 and minus 1, and as before, because again of the measurability conditions I'm imposing on aj to be part through phi of the M2 class, I can split the, expect the sum of these expectations into the sum of the product of two expectations. That is to say, the expectation of AJ squared omega and the expectation of BTJ plus 1 minus BTJ, everything squared. because of this course, okay? But now, what can I do? I can immediately observe that if I ignore for a second this guy, I know this guy. So this is the second moment of the increments of the Brownian motion. But we know that the Brownian motion has expectation zero, so the first moment is zero. So the second moment of the increment of the Brownian motion is nothing more than the variance itself than of our uh, Brownian motion, and we know that. So what is the variance of this increment? It's just the length of the time interval. It's tj plus 1 minus tj. So in a sense, I can immediately write this. This is equal to the sum for j n minus 1 of the expectation of a j squared omega that multiplies tj plus 1 minus tj. I repeat. Taking this equal to zero, it's a fatal error. It is not the first moment, it's the second moment. Okay, and we know that the second moment of a Brownian motion, since it is a normal with mean zero, and variance uh, equal to the time interval, the second moment coincides with the variance. So we can immediately write the variance. Now, what can we do? As we took the expectation within the sum, we can take it out. So we can write this as the expectation of the sum for j n minus 1 of a j omega multiplying t j plus 1 minus t j. But this is nothing more than a standard integral now, because I can just write the expectation of what? Look at this guy here. I can rewrite this as aj tj plus 1 tj, and this is, uh, sorry, this is squared. Always correct me if I forget something. This is a squared, okay, from this passage to this passage. We keep the square. So we have this square here, and this is equal to the interval between 0 and t of a j squared dt, but a j squared is the term of our simple process. So this is nothing more than phi squared dt. So we actually proved what we wanted to prove. E to isometry in the case in which phi 1 is equal to 2 is equal to a given phi. 
Okay, how can we prove now the situation in which this is no longer true? So we have taken phi 1 and phi 2 to be different. Now, the trick is very simple. And I would say elegant. It works like this. Consider phi 3, which is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2, that now are different. Now, it's not difficult to see that if I define a phi 3, which is the sum of two simple processes, it is itself a geometry starting from phi 3. So, I take the expectation of the integral between 0 and t of phi 3 dv squared. Now, if I do that, now I recall that phi 1 and phi 2 are within phi 3. So I can rewrite this as the expectation of, open parenthesis, 0 t phi 1 plus phi 2 dv squared. Okay? But now I can also write this. I, I can write the expectation of what? Of the integral of 0 t phi 1 dv plus the integral 0 t of phi 2 dv everything squared. Why can I do that? Because the first point that we have proven with this proposition is that the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. Okay, but then we can develop this object and this object becomes what? Is the expectation of the third 0 t phi 1 dv squared plus 2 times the product of 0 t phi 1 dv 0 t phi 2 dv plus 0 t phi 2 dv squared. So I've just developed the square here. Now, the expectation is a linear operator. And what do I have? I have that uh, the expectation of 0 t phi 1 dv squared. But allow me to do immediately one thing. This is the expectation of phi 1 dv squared. But phi 1 dv squared is the perfect situation in which I can apply the Ito isometry immediately. So I can substitute this with the term integral between 0 and t of phi 1 squared dt. The same is true for the last term with the only difference that instead of phi 1, I have phi 2. So it's the integral 0 t of phi 2 dt squared. And then I just copy this part, which is 2 times the expectation of 0 t phi 1 dv times 0 t phi 2 dv. Okay? And I stop here for a second. Now I come back to this. Okay, so allow me to just keep this quantity here. Okay? One. Now, what can I do? I start again from this. So I start from the same point. So I start from this, 
And now, since I told you that 5-3 is a simple process because it's the sum of two simple processes, I apply immediately the Eto isometry to 5-3. So it means that this is equal thanks to what we showed before when 5-1 was equal to 5-2. This is equal to the integral between 0 and t of 5-3 to the power of 2 dt. But now what I can do is the following. I can recall that phi 3 is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2. So it means that I will have the integral between 0 and t of phi 1 squared plus 2 phi 1 phi 2 plus phi 2 squared, everything dt. Okay, now I can exploit the linearity of the... So now what can, I, what can I do? I can transform, sorry, the sum, the integral of the sum into the sum of the integrals. So you agree with me that this will be the expectation of what? Of 0 t phi 1 dt squared plus 0 t 2 times phi 1 phi 2 dt plus 0 t phi 2 squared dt. Okay? So, I just split the integral now in the sum of the integral. So, the first part is the integral between 0 and t of phi 1 squared dt plus 2 times phi 1 phi 2 dt plus phi 2 squared dt. Now I can exploit the linearity of the expectation, and instead the expectation of this sum of integrals will be the sum of the expectations of the different integrals. It means that you have 0 t phi 1 squared dt plus 2 times the expectation of the integral between 0 and t of phi 1, phi 2 dt plus the expectation of the integral between 0 and t of phi 2 squared dt. But now recall that we started from the start the same point. So we all started from this to derive this that I called 1 and to derive this that I call 2. So it means that these two quantities need to be equal. So if we equate these two quantities, we immediately observe one thing. The expectation of phi 1 squared dt is here and it's here. So we can delete them. The expectation of the phi 2 squared dt term here is here and it is here. So it necessarily remains that this quantity here needs to be equal to this quantity here. Now the two can be simplified as well and exactly we are proving what we wanted to prove. So the expectation of the product of the two Eto integrals for our simple processes is equal to the expectation of the riemann stieltjes integral of the product of the two phi 1, phi 2 in dt. So this is very important and very useful when you study the correlation, the covariance, and other derivations of dependence, the, of linear dependence, that are deal with Eto integrals at this stage for simple processes, but as I told you, all these properties are inherited at the higher level of every function in our suitable class of functions. Okay, so we stop here for today. Next time, as I told you, we will see the approximating sequences and we will also discuss uh, what are the consequences of the, and other properties of the Eto integral that are better defined at the level of the general integral, for example, martingality, which is true also here, but is not so 
interesting. It's much more interesting for the general integral. So we will show that it is a martingale with respect to a specific filtration, but I guess you can imagine which one. And we will introduce the E to the W formula and a few examples that we will discuss. That will be the topic of last week. next week. The week after, we will finally enter into the more financial modeling. So we will introduce the concept of market, market measure, risk neutral measure, so the change of measure between the two. And you will see that all the machinery will start moving. What I hope you will enjoy of this course is the fact that even if now we start quite theoretical and non-financial, because for the moment finance is not at any point, you will see that once we have all these tools and we know how to use them, a lot of problems in finance that, according to other approaches, could require hours and hours of classes, once we have this machinery, they become very simple, they become immediate. We will, for example, show and discuss the results of Black and Scholes very quickly and very elegantly. So just be patient and everything will essentially, as in a puzzle, come together and we will reveal the big picture. Okay? Questions? If it is not the case, uh, see you next week. <laughs>